this video, we're going to quickly explore everything you need to know about exporting DXF and DWG files from SOLIDWORKS. And we're going to start off by looking at an example of sheet metal, since that's one of the primary applications our customers are exporting off 2D CAD drawings. Once you have your sheet metal part created, to export it to DXF or DWG, we'll just do a save as, and choose from the pull down menu to select DXF or DWG as our file type. Click save, and we'll be greeted with some options. Now we want to use the export option for sheet metal when it's available, but we also get to choose what type of entities we want to export, if we want to include things like bend lines, and how we want the file to be aligned. So if I click the check mark, you'll see I'll get a quick preview here of what the DWG is going to look like, and I can remove entities from the screen if I want to. But it's worth noting that the alignment is really most usefully defined on the flat pattern. So the workflow I actually like to use is before I go in to save out the DWG, I'll generate the flat pattern first. And then go into the command for file, save as. Save it as DXF in this case. And then when I activate my output alignment, I can choose where I want the coordinate system to be based on the flat pattern. Also choose to align the axes the way that I want. And control the various behaviors. Now you might see I had some forming tools and gussets on here. Those have options that control their behavior as well. There's options in both the document properties and in each individual feature. If I go in and edit one of these features, such as the gusset, scroll down to the bottom, I can control uh, to override the document settings to show that on the flat pattern how I want. So I can show just the center location or the center location and the profile of the gusset, and that's what we see when we go ahead and flatten there. Now, anytime you're exporting from any software, it's very important that you verify the output. So if I'm going to publish out this DXF file, I'll have multiple options to verify it. I'll enable the features I want to bring over, adjust the alignment the way I want, And then after I click OK, I'll get a window where I can do a quick verification, remove any entities if I want to, and save this out. But ultimately, I want to verify it in some type of 2D CAD program to make sure it's correct. So I'm going to use DraftSite, which is a free 2D CAD program you can download from our website, and open up that DXF file. So inside DraftSite, I can verify that the coordinate system is correct and make sure there's no obvious problems with my export. It's important to note that DXF files are unitless, so we can verify the way the units were exported by quickly adding a dimension in our 2D CAD tool. And that's important to remember if you're sending a file out to a vendor to get manufactured, if, you're, if it's not being accompanied by a 2D drawing with dimensions, then it's important to state the units that the DXF file is in. Other things you need to worry about when collaborating with other people and 2D CAD users is the export options on the DXF and DWG. Now we breezed over these, but when you're in that dialog for a file save as, and you choose the file type as DXF or DWG, you'll have an options button here that you can activate. When we activate that, we'll have control over the year or compatibility version we want to save back as. So this is for someone using AutoCAD. We can save up to as recent as 2013 version or as far back as R12. These different versions can change the output slightly. So again, we want to verify what happens on these different exports. And you'll see some of the options here change for the types of fonts and line styles that we want to be using with these various versions. We have options on enabling endpoint merging. So if we have points that are close together within a certain threshold, we can specify that distance here. We can also enable a higher quality DWG output, which may increase the export time. And a major topic that I see come up frequently is splines versus polylines. So when you have some shape that's not just lines and arcs, if you're using splines and SOLIDWORKS, we have to control if we want to export those as splines or export them as polylines. And as you can see on the screen here, splines are just like you'd expect in SOLIDWORKS, continuous entities, whereas polylines are basically an approximation broken down into potentially hundreds of line segments to represent that geometry. Now some CAD and CAM software can't read in splines. Sometimes polylines might be the preferred way to go. 
but if someone's expecting to be able to manipulate the geometry, then they'll have a lot easier time with the spline. Do a quick demonstration of this here. I have an airfoil that I exported out as a spline from SolidWorks, and I can go in and I can actually grab the control points and manipulate it nice and smoothly. Whereas I have the same exact file saved out with polyline format, and we can see that if I zoom in here, I really have nothing but just individual lines that are connected by dots, essentially. It's worth knowing, too, if you do want to convert to polyline, I've had the best success saving back as the R12 version. So we talked about some of the major points for saving out sheet metal parts, doing the Save As, DXF, or DWG. I like to activate the flat pattern first so I can choose my output alignment and place my coordinate system based off the flat pattern. Verifying the output. And modifying any of the settings on the gusset or form tool features like punches and things like that. And also the export options regarding compatibility of different versions of AutoCAD or splines versus polylines. You may also want to export off a part as a DWG file, a non sheet metal. That's also possible. So, as you can see on the screen here, if I have the part in a certain orientation, I can do the same save as DXF. And this time I won't have the option for sheet metal, so I'll choose to export off either my current view or any of my existing views here. If I want to create kind of a 3D isometric view in a DXF or DWG file, I can do that. Alternatively, I can export just off specific faces. So, if I choose faces, loops, or edges here, and choose a particular face on the model, for instance, like this one, and click the check mark, it's going to only export that one face's edges in the DXF or DWG file. This can be useful if you need to create some artwork or a label or something like that, because the DXF files are technically a vector graphics format that can get converted and pulled into programs like Adobe Illustrator. Another thing you might be interested in is exporting off DXF or DWG files from an assembly. Well, unfortunately, we can't export DXF or DWG directly from an assembly, but there is a workaround which is creating a drawing from the assembly file. The only reason I typically see people creating DXF files from assemblies is when they want to do a nested sheet layout like you see on the screen here, if you want to export off a cut pattern of multiple units. Again, making a drawing of it first will allow you to do that. So this brings me to my next topic, which is some of the details we want to pay attention to when we're working with SOLIDWORKS drawings and trying to convert those to DXF or DWG files. First is that we support the export of drawing layers to DXF or DWG. So I like to turn on my Layers toolbar and dock that somewhere on the screen so I can get to my Layers Manager and see the different layers that are built in here. If you set up layers on your drawing or your drawing templates, then you'll be able to carry these through to the DXF export or DWG export. Same goes for any blocks you might be using. So if you have blocks to represent various types of annotations, these should also get carried through the DXF or DWG export as blocks. Probably one of the most important settings to be aware of is scale. So suppose I have views on the sheet with multiple different scales associated to them. When I go to save off this DXF or DWG file, I need to pay attention to my options. By default, it'll save the entire sheet as one-to-one, -one, but if I wanted one particular view to be saved at a one-to-one -one scale, I would have to enable this option for scaling output one-to-one, -one, and I can choose from the available scales that are in the drawing. So basically, if I choose the view that I just switched to half scale, it will double the size of the drawing so that that particular view ends up being a one-to-one -one scale on the DXF export. There's also options on how to handle multiple sheets. Last point I want to mention is particularly important if you're working on a drawing of assemblies, which is that if you're planning on doing a DXF or DWG export, you want to make sure that your views in your drawing are set to high quality display style. This is very important because if they're set to draft quality, it's possible that after saving off the DXF or DWG, you'll have missing views on the export. So to quickly summarize our tips for the drawing side, creating a drawing and then exporting it off as DXF or DWG can be a quick workaround if you need to export off an assembly as a DXF or DWG. 
when we're working with exporting drawings, we support drawing layers and also sketch blocks. We want to make sure we have the scale adjusted properly. If there's any views that aren't to scale that we want to rescale on export. And we also want to make sure that our drawing views are set to high quality. Hopefully these tips help. If you have any of your own tips on DXF or DWG export, feel free to comment down below. And also let us know if you have any other questions on this process.